Alright, next we are going for subtopic 1.2 which is about collision theory. Okay guys, here is the learning outcomes for 1.2. By the end of the lesson, so you should know how to explain the collision theory, define activation energy, explain transition state theory, and draw energy profile diagram of a reaction. Alright, so what is collision theory? Collision theory ni ialah theory yang dapat explainkan the rate of chemical reactions. And then, it is based on the idea that molecule tu, dia kenalah collide to react. And also, the collisions involved mestilah effective collision. Nah, penting ni. Okay, apa tu effective collision? Okay, effective collision ni ialah collision pelanggaran molecule yang akan menghasilkan produk. Contohnya, kalau you ada reactant and then you nak hasilkan produk, maka molekul-molekul yang di reactant ni mestilah menghasilkan effective collision, okay? And then ada juga requirements untuk effective collision. Untuk effective collision ni berlaku, first thing first ialah uh, the colliding molecules tu kenalah ada energy, uh, kinetic energy yang minimum. That is known as activation energy EA. Okay, untuk uh, initiate the chemical reaction. Activation energy nanti Miss akan terangkan uh, kemudian lah. Tapi yang pastinya kalau di molecule so kenalah ada activation energy. Supaya dia dapat initiate chemical reaction. And then, molecule tu um, mestilah berlanggar in a right orientation. Okay, if you look at this uh, diagram. Okay, okay, if you tengok dekat diagram A ni. Uh, before collision, dia tak, tak adalah berlanggar kan? Okay. Tapi bila collision tu berlaku dekat right orientation, maka after collision, kamu akan dapat product. Okay? Kalau let's say it's a non-effective collision and then dia uh, tak berlaku in a right orientation, okay? So, after collision, you takkan dapat product lah. So, no reaction will be occurs. Alright? Tadi kan, uh, Miss ada cakap, in order untuk kamu dapat effective collision, one of the requirements ialah the collagen molecule tu kena ada activation energy. Activation energy ni simbol dia ialah Ea. So, apakah activation energy? Okay, activation energy by definition ialah minimum energy. Okay, minimum energy yang diperlukan untuk kamu uh, initiate the chemical reaction. Okay, contohnya lah, A ni ialah reactant. Okay, any reactant. B ni ialah product. So, untuk uh, daripada A ke point B, uh, dia kena melepasi bunggulan bukit ni. Okay. So, bunggulan bukit ni, kita anggap dia sebagai minimum energy yang diperlukan untuk dia sampai ke point B. Minimum energy yang diperlukan untuk dia jadi product. Alright. Uh, so, this is the energy profile diagram untuk activation uh, energy profile diagram okey yang menunjukkan uh, activation energy okey uh, tapi macam mana nak draw energy profile diagram nanti miss akan terangkan more about it later lah okey di mana kamu punya y axis must be uh, energy ataupun potential energy and then your x axis must be reaction coordinate ataupun Reaction pathway uh, ataupun lagi satu apa ya, masih ingat lah. Tapi it can be uh, sama dia di reaction coordinate ataupun reaction progress ataupun reaction pathway. Okay, kalau y axis mesti lah potential energy. And kat sini, you kena lukis seolah-olah you akan sediakan tempat untuk reaction. Okay, uh, sebab some of my students lukis energy profile diagram uh, macam ni lah. Tak ada langsung tempat untuk reaktor dengan produk. Uh, so, salah ya. Tak nak macam tu. Uh, this is not something that you uh, kena draw. Bila you nak kena draw energy profile diagram, you need, you need to draw something like this. And also, uh, akan ada transition state. Transition state ni ialah uh, di mana dia punya tempat tu ialah dekat maximum potential energy. Okay. Uh, ni adalah tempat transition state. Maximum potential energy. And simple transition state ni macam bentuk tulang ikan ni. Eh. Uh, lepas tu, this is mana, let, mana terletaknya activation energy. So, activation energy ni ialah point between, okay, kalau ada isi dekat energy profile diagram, activation energy ni boleh didapati uh, bila energy difference between maximum 
potential energy. Uh, this is maximum potential energy. Okay, maximum potential energy uh, dengan energy of the reactants. Okay, potential energy of reactants. So, ni adalah potential energy of reactants. Okay, so the energy difference between maximum potential energy, energy difference between maximum potential energy uh, dengan uh, potential energy of reactants ni lah kita namakan dia sebagai activation energy, EA. Okay, bukan E1, bukan E2, this is E. A. Dengan A huruf kecil E A. Okay, next ialah transition state theory. So, transition state theory ni apa? Okay, transition state ni ialah configuration of atoms of the colliding species at the time of the collision. Okay, and species yang terhasil dekat transition state ni uh, dinamakan sebagai activated complex. So, activated complex ni is actually a mixture of reactant dengan product. And activated complex ni ialah complex yang terhasil bila dia berada di transition transition state okay so for example this is your energy profile diagram okay di mana your y axis ialah potential energy and then your x axis ialah course of direction ataupun reaction pathway reaction coordinate is the same thing all right and then if you look at here uh, ni pun dia kena buat reaction tu so dia kat tempat untuk reaction so dia kat tempat untuk product okay uh, and this is dia punya curve all right so, transition state ni, kalau if you look at here, it is the maximum potential energy. Okay, this is the maximum potential energy. Okay. So, contohnya lah, kalau kamu punya reactant ni, kamu ada hydroxide and bromoethane. So, um, hydroxide ni ialah OH, bromoethane ni ialah CH3Br. Okay, and your product, if you look at your product, uh, you ada um, CH3OH plus Br. Okay, uh, so if this is your reactant and this is your product, okay, so activated complex ni lah dia activated complex. Ni apa yang kalau ikutkan graph ni lah, uh, kalau ikutkan this curve, okay, this is the apa tu molecule yang berada di reactant which is CH3Br plus kan dengan OH this is a uh, molecule yang berada di product which is CH3OH plus Br dia nak hasilkan CH3OH plus Br okay this is molecule yang terhasil dekat transition state that we call it as activated complex because dia ada campuran reactant dan juga product okay kat sini you boleh nampak ada OH Okay, ada CH3Br tapi walaupun dia nak form CH3OH kiranya um, akan ada pemutusan dengan pencantuman kat sini lah di mana uh, OH ni akan berpisah dengan uh, OH ni akan bercantum dengan CH3 CH3Br ni dia akan berpisah dengan Br kalau let's say dia berjaya untuk jadi produk Okay, so kiranya activated complex ni is a combination between uh, molecule yang berada di reaktor dengan produk and dia terhasil uh, bila molecule tu berada di transition state. Alright, these are the characteristics of activated complex. Okay, activated complex ni, they're very unstable and they ada short half-life. Okay, and potential energy dia is greater than the reactant or end products. So, if you look at here, this is the maximum potential energy kan? Uh, di situ lah terletaknya transition state. Okay, Maximum potential energy. That's why dia cakap transition state uh, activity complex ni, dia punya potential energy ni lagi greater than reactants ataupun product. Lepas tu, activity complex and the reactants are in chemical equilibrium and kalau let's say dia dapat melepasi activation energy, dia akan jadi product. Kalau dia tak lepas activation energy, dia akan roll back jadi reactants. Okay? So that's why kat sini ayat yang last ni, uh, dia boleh jadi Produk ataupun dia boleh jadi reaktan. It depends. Okay, for the last uh, learning outcome untuk 1.2, uh, dia suruh kamu uh, tahu macam mana nak draw energy profile diagram. So, energy profile diagram ni, dia terbagi kepada dua. 
Sebab you ada dua proses in a chemical reaction. Sama ada is in an exothermic process ataupun it is an endothermic process. Okay, exothermic dengan endothermic ni mesti rasa uh, kamu dah diberi dah macam uh, expose about exposure about this time uh, chapter 5 or 6 if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, kalau exothermic ni ialah proses di mana kamu uh, release heat, ex, exo, macam exit. So, it's like the heat is released. Endothermic ni ialah proses di mana heat is absorbed, endo. So, ingatlah heat tu macam masuk dalam. Exo, exit, uh, so dia macam heat tu keluar. So, bila heat tu keluar, dia punya enthalpy change dia, delta H will be equals to negative. Okay? So, kalau you nampak chemical reaction, Oh, sorry tu. Ni pula. So, kalau you nampak chemical reaction, di mana kat hujung sekali tu kan, dia tulis delta H is equal to negative, that means it's an exothermic process. Okay? Kalau endothermic process pula, you akan nampak chemical reaction tu, dia tulis delta H tu equal to positive. Okay? Sebab heat is absorbed, endo, heat masuk dalam, so positive. Ni heat keluar, so dia jadi negative. Alright. And then next, macam mana you nak lukis energy profile diagram? Yang pastinya, you punya y-axis dengan x-axis you kena label dengan betul, okay? Okay, contohnya, uh, you punya y-axis, if you look at here, y-axis you mestilah potential energy. Apa unit potential energy? Energy unit dia apa? Joules, okay? So, kalau potential energy, kebanyakannya joules per mol lah. So, you can write dia punya unit. Sama ada kilojoules per mol ataupun you boleh buat joules per mol. Tak kisahlah tapi normally diorang buat kilojoules per mol. Alright. And then the x-axis here, uh, you pun kena label juga x-axis. Sama ada it is progress of reaction atau reaction pathway. Sama je. Ataupun uh, you nak letak ayat reaction coordinate at your x-axis pun boleh juga. Okay. So it's the same thing. Uh, Tiga-tiga ni adalah benda yang sama. Sama ada you nak tulis uh, progress of reaction ke, reaction coordinate ataupun reaction pathway. Okay. So, x-axis dengan y-axis tu kena betul. Barulah dapat satu markah nanti. Okay. Another mark will be how you label the reactant and product. Kalau exothermic, you ingat ni. Kalau exothermic, the potential energy for reactant ni ke potential energy kan. The potential energy untuk reactant must be more than product. Okay. Itu kalau exothermic process. Potential energy of reactant kena more than product. Okay. While endothermic process, potential energy of reactant must be less than product. Okay. Ha, itu pula kalau endothermic process. Potential energy, you tengok ni. This is the point where potential energy of reactants berada kan? And this is the point where the potential energy of product berada. And if you look at here, potential energy of reactant untuk endothermic process is less than product. Alright? Okay, and next ialah, you, bila you dah, dah lukis potential energy lah. For example, miss lukis ni dulu, Lepas tu ni dulu. And then barulah I buat the curve here. Okay, please ya. Yeah, Misa nak kamu buat um, apa tu? Kamu lukis macam ni kan? Misa nak kamu tak ada langsung reactant. Tak ada, tak ada langsung tempat untuk produk. I don't want you to uh, buat dia punya energy profile diagram ni macam ni. This is so wrong. So wrong. Tak ada tempat untuk reactant. Tak ada tempat untuk produk. So wrong. I don't want you to... Uh, Miss tak ajar macam tu, okay? Ha, kamu jangan memandang nak draw graph macam tu sebab I ada nampak, uh, so jangan. Uh, and then, uh, okay, bila you dah lukis the bukit ni, okay, mula macam ni juga endothermic. You lukis dulu potential energy untuk return, you lukis potential energy untuk product, you kena make sure ada perbezaan potential energy mereka berdua ni. Lepas tu barulah you buat this curve, okay, to connectkan between return and product. And after that, you can see that This will be the maximum potential energy in the energy profile diagram. Tak kisahlah exothermic ke endothermic ke, this would be the maximum potential energy for both exothermic process and endothermic process in energy profile diagram. So, kita boleh conclude kan, okay, the maximum potential energy ni 
ialah tempat apa ya? Tempat transition state. Okay. Transition state dia punya simbol apa? Simbol dia macam tulang ikan. Ha. This is the maximum potential energy. So, this is where your transition state would be. Okay. Alright. And then, lepas you dah labelkan you punya transition state, next ialah, you need to label your activation energy. Okay, you ingat ni eh, activation energy, simbol dia ialah E, E, E. Ada, sebab misal ada tengok, ada orang buat simbol activation energy ni E1, E2, apa tu? That's so wrong, okay. Activation energy, simbol special dia ialah EA. Okay. So, macam mana kamu nak, uh, apa tu, kamu nak labelkan EA dekat energy profile diagram kamu. EA ni, okay, EA ni ialah energy difference. Between potential energy, okay, potential energy max dengan uh, potential energy of reactant, okay. So, if you look at this exothermic process punya energy profile diagram, this is the max potential energy and endothermic pun this is the max potential energy which kita dah labelkan dengan transition state. Okay, ni bukan F tau, ni macam tulang ikan macam ni. Ha, sorry, eh. nanti kamu lukis tak betul. Miss tak suka kalau lukis tak betul. Nanti salah, susah juga. Okay, and then next ialah, kan you nak label EA ni ialah energy difference between potential energy maximum dengan potential energy reactant. So, you tengok reactant masing-masing. This is the reactant. Okay, this is the reactant punya potential energy untuk exothermic process. So, this is the potential energy reactant untuk exothermic process. Well, for endothermic process, this is potential energy reactant, okay? Uh, so, this is going to be the potential energy reactant untuk endothermic process. Okay, so sekarang ni, bila you nak uh, lukis activation energy tu, uh, you buatlah, this is the energy difference between, okay, so, you can see here, this is the energy difference. Yang arrow ni ialah energy difference between maximum potential energy and the potential energy reactant. So, you label lah dengan EA. EA. Ha, dah. Sudah. Gitu je. Macam ni pun. This is the maximum potential energy. This is potential energy reactant. Ha, lepas tu, you labelkan saja dengan EA. Okay. Kalau forward ke reverse tu, kemudian lah. Tapi yang pastinya, uh, this is the activation energy for energy profile diagram exothermic this is activation energy for energy profile diagram endothermic ok so key point dekat sini apa make sure you kena ada uh, y axis yang betul x axis yang betul tak kisahlah dia uh, endothermic ke exothermic ke ok uh, lepas tu kamu kena ada sedia kata apa untuk reactant and then kalau uh, exothermic you kena make sure potential energy reactant must be more than product kalau endothermic potential energy reactant must be less than product ok uh, lepas tu uh, lukis you punya product punya uh, potential energy of your product tu uh, lepas tu uh, don't forget to uh, Transition state ni. Labelkan transition state. And lastly, label your activation energy. Okay. Activation energy for both uh, exothermic and juga endothermic process. So, I hope that you don't miss any of these key points when you want to draw the energy profile diagram. Alright. So, you bolehlah cuba test it out and draw, uh, draw it yourself.